Hey everyone, Shashank this side. I hope everybody is doing well and safe at home. As you can see on my screen, today we'll be discussing one of a production important use case on how you can whitelist the customer IP address or a range of IP address into your environment. This is one of a generic important use case where most of the time customer asks the hosted provider team, can you whitelist the range of IP address into the environment so that the hosted application can be browsed within the customer environment and the hosted environment just to make it more secure from the public world. As an example, you are my customer and let's say we are hosting lgcticw.com into AWS world, right? Now, in order to make it more secure, I want this application to be browsed only into my IP address ranges like my VPN my within my firewall and obviously the hosted provided environment so that Apart from my company people and apart from the hosted provider company people, nobody will be able to see this particular application. This is just to make an additional layer of security on top of your application. Now this is a feature available with most of the load balancing logic like F5, Big IP F5 which is a famous load balancing tool, PFSense and many more. Interesting point here is can we implement a whitelisting message like you don't belong to this environment, please contact your network administrator or your administrator in general. Can we implement that particular message to this particular environment, the hosting provider environment? Yes, that is possible. Within F5, we use iRules. Within AWS Load Balancer, there is a functionality where you can implement a custom message, whether it is 200 response, 503 response, or any other response on the HTTP side. You can send out that message to all the people who doesn't belong to the range of IP address. So this video is dedicated towards AWS application load balancer where we will be doing the whitelisting as well as the custom message implementation. So that's the flow that I have designed. We have a group of user. You can consider the group of user as your customer. Now we are hosting lgcticw.com as an application into AWS. We are using HTTPS load balancer, which is your application load balancer. You can say that a layer seven load balancer and on the back end we have EC2 instances. Now how, how the thing will be going to happen on the whitelisting side. So user or customer, they will be going to give us the range of IP address. Once we have the range of IP address within AWS load balancer, we will be going to create a rule. Anybody is hitting lgcticw.com should go to the dedicated EC2 instance, whichever it's uh, hosted with. Plus, if the range is not available for that particular outside world people, then we will be throwing out a message, a custom message that you don't belong here. So please contact the administrator or the responsible person who is taking care of this application. And since we will be going to define a range that only this range will be applicable to browse the application. So if that range matches with the rule on the application load balancer side, then give us the application console to all the applicable users who belong to that particular range. Now this is very generic production use case that you will find in every company, every organization where customer asks for the whitelisting just to make the application more secure from the public world. I hope this clears a lot in terms of the flow that we'll be going to define today within AWS world. Now in order to do that, I have to jump into AWS management console. I need at least one application server hosted with some web application servers like Apache or IIS. So I have already created an EC2 instance running with Apache. So let me go to my EC2 dashboard. This is my EC2 dashboard. As you can see, one instance is running and this instance is running with an Apache in the background, it's a test page. With this page, we'll be going to create our load balancer, we'll be going to whitelist the IP address and the custom message implementation as well. So for that, let's go to the load balancer. Again, if you're not aware of the load balancing logic, please go through my playlist of network load balancers. You will understand in a more clear way how the load balancer works in general plus the type of load balancer we have in AWS. Now I'm going to create quickly create a load balancer within my Virginia area. So click on create load balancer. Going with the application load balancer which is layer 7. 
give this name as test ALB. I'm going with internet facing load balancer. You can do this with internal load balancer as well within your organization if you want. But mostly uh, these kind of scenarios when the customer interaction comes, then mostly the internet facing load balancer comes into picture. VPC, I'm going with my VPC. So at least two availability zone required to have the creation of your public load balancer just to make it highly available in nature. So I'm going with one A and one B. So that's my second public subnet. Okay. Security group. So let me see if I have any uh, ALB. Okay, perfect. Listener, I'm going with HTTP only because I don't have a certificate so that I can create HTTPS. So first, let me create a blank target group. So click on target again, target groups are the container which hold your application server or web server in the back end. So I'm giving this name as test ALB HTTP port my VPC. Next, there's no instances I'm going to select over here. Click on create target group. So target group is created. If you just refresh it, you will find it over here. So I'm sending the blank request request coming directly to my load balancer to a blank target group. Reason being, we'll be going to create number of rules to send the traffic to my Apache instance. Click on create load balancer. Now this will be going to take a bit of time, but meanwhile, this is in the provisioning state. What we can do, we can go to the listener section, click on view edit rule. Here the logic of uh, the rule routing happens to the dedicated target group in the backend. If you're running Apache, if you're running IIS or any other web server, you can route the request based upon the host header. So what I'm going to do now is like, I'll be creating certain number of rules so that let's say based upon hosted value, abc.com, 123.com, let's route that request to my backend target group. So as of now, this particular load balancer, if you see the Default rule is routed towards test ALB target group, which is totally blank. This target group consisting of nothing. So if I click on this target group, you will see it's a blank target group that what we created a few minutes back. The targets are empty, right? Now go back to the rule section again. And if I take the DNS of my application load balancer, let's open a new tab. If I try to hit, I'm getting 503 because the backend target consisting of no instances, right? Now, in order to force this to work, what I'm going to do, I'll be taking the DNS of ALB and forcing that DNS of ALB to route that request to my backend Apache target group. So for that, before creating a rule, let's create a new target group called app. Select the VPC, click next, select the instance, include and create. So this target group is consisting of my Apache instance. Now let's go back to our load balancer, click on view edit rule and let's create a new rule. Let's say based upon host header. Now I'm forcing this particular load balancer to route anything coming with this name to my Apache. So that's one way of doing your load balancing rule in AWS LB. As of now, we, are, we haven't done anything towards the whitelisting side. So let's forward that request to app. Save it, save. Now if I try to browse this, obviously it will take bit of time to convert that particular environment into Apache. So let me refresh it. Let's see app registration. It's in the initial phase, right? So that's why it take a bit of time. Yeah, it's it's done. So now we, when we are hitting the AWS DNS, I'm getting Apache page. The next part is how we can do the whitelisting. For that, let's go back to our rule section. Here we have to add one rule and modify this existing rule to make it whitelisting of the IP addresses plus um, implementation of the custom message. First of all, let's modify the existing rule. If any host header with this value comes, then route that request to the dedicated target group of 
that particular application server. I am adding a condition if the source IP, here the whitelisting of IP address comes into picture. Now this is my IP address. So consider this as a customer IP address. Now if both condition matches, then only you will be able to see the page behind this DNS. Now since I am hitting from my IP address, I still will be able to see the page. Now if I copy it, this is my workspace. Now if I try to hit the range over here, I might get an error 503. Okay. So obviously 503 showing to the customer is not a good experience, right? So in that case, how you can do the custom message implementation, you have to add a rule, click insert. Again, it's a host header value because we already have a whitelisting done on the IP address side. If this host header comes into picture, return a fixed response. It can be 400, it can be 200, should be 200 actually with the best customer experience, the HTTP code and enter your custom message like you don't belong here please get in touch with your network administrator to whitelist your IP address. Again, the custom message uh, can be a generic one for all your application because we are dealing with a multi-tenant world, right? So you have to make it more generic that is applicable for all the customers. Click save. So again, if I hit it from my local laptop, I will still be able to browse because my IP address is whitelisted. Now let's go back to my workspace. Now if I try to refresh this page, I should be able to see the message. You don't belong here. Please get in touch with your network administrator to whitelist your IP address. So that's how the logic implemented for the whitelisting of IP address and the custom message on your load balancer within AWS world. If you go with the F5s, then it has to be done via I rules. Now going back to our diagram. So that's what it is. If user belong to the IP address range for that DNS, then they will be able to see the page, the custom page or the application page in general, what I'm talking about. If they are a legit range then they'll be able to see the application page if they don't belong to the ip address range we are throwing them a generic message that you don't belong here please get in touch with your administrator to for whitelisting of your ip address so i hope this clears a lot in terms of how you can build this process for your customers to make the application much more secure between your customer environment and your hosted provider environment so just play around with this show it to the management that this is much more easier when it comes to implementation of these kind of scenarios and make your customer, make your business happy and secure. Place out a comment in comment section if you're facing any issue. I'll be there to help you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.